What's up guys? Justin with Bite Fight Angler. I know I don't get to go on here and go live or anything like that anymore, so I figure this would be kind of the next best thing without the questions. So I'm so busy right now keeping up with the orders and making baits, getting ready for the fishing show coming up here in uh, December. So I will be shooting these baits while I'm on here talking a little bit, but just wanted to kind of make a little video. I know it's been a while since I've really done a video of me just talking or anything like that about fishing. So maybe I can get it going where we can, I've, I've asked a few times in the group uh, on Facebook, the Facebook group, if anyone had any questions, you know, that I could answer or whatever like that, something like that, some kind of Q and A, I guess, but I can't do it live because I work odd hours right now because I'm working night shifts. So it's kind of, I mean, I don't think anybody wants me to go live at four in the morning. <laughs> so this is, this has kind of been the routine is get off work and shoot baits and then go to sleep. So anyway, so this is kind of the only time that I have to make videos and it's super, super early in the morning right now still. So one of the things that I really kind of wanted to go over and uh, I don't know if you would really say go over, but the time that we're in right now. I know, uh, I know there's a lot of people that, you know, oh, it's winter time, it's time to start throwing the gigantic baits and things like that. In my, uh, in my experience, and that's another thing that I wanted to tell y'all, everything that goes up on my YouTube channel that I talk about fishing or if I post it on Facebook or anything like that, everything's my opinion off of my experience. I don't, I haven't ever been the type to really, you know, I mean, I have gone and, and bought corkies uh, back whenever I, I first really started, you know, fishing uh, salt water and, and and really starting to try to learn the salt water game and things like that yes I did follow some of the trends trends didn't work for me so being that I have fished for quite a while of my life and and been able to figure it out before in fresh water salt water is a different challenge but the challenge was fun and now and, and now I have the experience that I have and I really feel like my experience has taught me uh, taught me well on things that you know I figured out I, I went out and actually spent time on the water and figured out myself because you can watch a bunch of YouTube videos or, or whatever you want to watch but when you see a video you're seeing this much of the water that's actually out there and when you get out there and you have to make the decision on where on where you want to fish and how you're going to attack uh certain places the water gets it, it's it's unbelievable when you get out there how intimidating it can be when you see all of the water so i think one of the best things that i did uh being more of a freshwater fisherman fishing lakes and things like that I broke it down into small areas and the way and the way that you break it down in those small areas is uh, pre-trip planning and whenever you and whenever you plan your trip it makes it a whole lot easier because then when you get out there you have something in mind that you're gonna do and you're not just getting out there and trying to make a decision on the water you actually have you know gone on a, a, a lot of people will recommend it Google Maps you can go on Google Maps and you can look at areas you can go on Bing Maps you can go on uh, Google Earth you can go on all these different things and you can look at the areas that you you think you might want to fish so once you actually you know done a little bit of research on the areas that you think you might want to fish you can go out there you have a plan put together and go out there and stick to your plan don't don't get to the water 
and your your spots over here somewhere but you look over here and oh well maybe I could go fish over there stick to your plan on that trip unless unless you really see something really something happening I mean it obviously your plan can change at any given moment if you're supposed to fish over here and you see redfish busting or, or trout busting or something bait birds whatever definitely go hit that but don't uh if you don't see anything don't just look at it and go oh i think that looks save that for the next trip you know that, that's how you've got to really learn to break the water down and break down areas uh so that you can so that you can compact all that water into one smaller area and figure out where these fish are how they're moving is, is there fish in the area that you were going to go to uh you know sometimes you got to take that chance and take that risk I know a lot of people like to get on Facebook and you know ask where where they were and things like that and, and it sometimes you'll get somebody that's nice enough to tell you sometimes I'll uh, when I do my videos you know I don't hide the backgrounds I don't hide the backgrounds in the pictures so sorry about the microwave but I got to keep working so it, you know it's not something that uh, a lot of people believe that time on the water is the best teacher and I'm one of those people everything that I've learned in salt water pretty much I've taught myself uh, by what I, I did watch some videos and you know things like that and to get the general knowledge of what I might need to do or what I want to do but all in all you can uh, if somebody says a corky works for them it may work for them you get out there and throw it a couple of times and then you realize like I did man this ain't my type of fishing so I used to be I, I'm a soft plastic throwing guy my wife is the one that actually talked it taught me into making my own soft plastics and I started making them and me and my buddy uh, Miguel we we started using them and we were catching fish left and right and this has been a year-round bait for me for the last almost two years now year-round and I have different styles that actually you can you can uh, you can use those different styles to your advantages I mean we have the flicker fluke the flicker fluke is is I'll grab one in a minute but the, the flicker fluke is something that I mean you can fish it on light jig heads you, and, and and really make it and, and tandem rig it just like you would some gulp or anything like that and and it really depending on what size jig head you put in it it can have a slow fall it can have a fast fall it can be whatever you want so you know a, a corky is is basically what they call a jerk bait so uh, whenever you throw it in the water it's it's a slow sinking suspending and it, and when you jerk when you jerk it it jerks and then it, it'll sit and it'll slowly start falling now can you do that with a soft plastic probably not with the same slow fall because that's all figured you know over time but you can go to a lighter jig head and have your plastic fall slower than it normally would because I fish a quarter ounce jig head most of the time so if I was to switch up to a 16th uh, a 16th ounce jig head it's gonna have a whole lot slower of a fall now what you have to remember is whenever you're fishing that lighter jig head it's gonna have a slower fall so you have to fish it slower and that right there is the winter key slower fishing Fishing, fishing your bait slower and uh, leaving them in a strike zone a lot longer and there, there's other ways that you can do it too you can use a you can use a popping cork just to help hold your bait in a certain strike zone if you need to you don't have to necessarily pop it real hard to get the blow up sound but you can use it to regulate where you're gonna have your bait sitting in the water or, or you can use the the lighter jig head and it'll it'll fall slower and as you it, and it takes a little getting used to but as you get used to it 
uh, you know, you'll kind of have a count in your head of where that bait is after you twitch it and it's falling and you give it a twitch and you let it just, and, and you, it'll dart, that, that flicker flute will dart just like that corky wheel. It's a smaller bait, but it definitely has some good uh, darting action. This right here, you can twitch it if you want to. You can put this on a lighter jig head and, and this will fall pretty slow. The tail won't have quite as much action as it will with that quarter ounce jig head. But most of the time, when it starts getting it starts getting more in those winter colder area colder times those fish are going to be more on the bottom in deeper water so yes you can throw a lighter um a lighter jig head i don't recommend it because you want to get that bait down there where they're at and most of the time they're going to be in deeper holes on the bottom stacked up and that's why i love fishing this type of this time of year because it when you find them, you, you found them. So the, one of the keys, one of the biggest keys to fishing wintertime is going to be finding those deeper holes. Uh, you know, you're not gonna, now don't get me wrong, I can be proven wrong on some of those, and that's where I'm trying to, That's this is where I'm trying to get at I'm going off of my experience only. I'm not going and reading an article and you know telling you what I read in the article. Off of my experience, you can still catch fish in the winter in shallower water, but it's it, it's they're not going to be real active. So you're not going to be able to see them like you normally would if they were busting up bait uh, in the summertime chasing bait. Do you have to use a real big lure? No, three and a half inches has worked for me for two years. I haven't went a winter without catching fish. I hardly go a trip without catching fish. And that's why we started the hashtag no skunks because that's what we're trying to get at. And that's what I want everybody to be at whenever you use these lures. So, and, and I know that these lures work. The colors that I make, they I, I've used them all. I use them all. I have, a, I have a couple of other guys that use them all the time. And, and and we catch fish on them so so it's not something that you know it, it's a year-round lure the the haymaker is definitely a year-round lure and you don't have to go to a huge bait in the winter time those fish it the thing about catching fish in the winter time is it has to be right in their face and uh that's why the corky is so effective because if they if the fish are suspending and not on the bottom that that corky will actually you know it'll suspend and slow fall and it'll keep it in their face longer if the fish are suspended in it and not sitting on the bottom which that could be but there's also it but they're also uh, but using using other like soft plastics there is ways to you know figure out kind of where they're sitting at just as well as if you were using a corky so all in all you know winter fishing you've got to have it in their face they're not going to chase it but they will eat uh, a 3.5 inch soft plastic bait they will eat this if it's in their face and i know that for a fact so don't think that you have to go out of your way out of your comfort zone if you've been using these lures to go buy a bigger lure or if you if you haven't thrown a corky if you're gonna try to throw it I suggest dedicating a whole trip and bring nothing but a corky because it's a harder lure to to get used to because just because it's it's a bigger lure and with and the bigger your lure that you use it eliminates the smaller bites which can be a good thing if you know if you've been catching good fish and you know and you kind of understand that it's kind of harder to use one of those bigger lures because it it kind of weeds out all the smaller fish and you know when that you get that one bite that one bite is gonna be a good one uh, if you're a if you're a beginner artificial uh, lure thrower 
that's kind of a hard thing to go to because I mean you're wanting to catch fish and get your confidence up and a corky is a hard lure to get confidence in it's a good lure don't get me wrong I see all kinds of good fish caught on, on them all the time but it's definitely a hard lure to to get used to and to you know get some confidence in but once you once you've caught so many fish and you're really starting to try to figure out or, or you're really trying to start finding that real good big big fish or whatever that's when that's when throwing the bigger lures or whatever you want to do uh throwing a corky or a bigger a, a bigger soft plastic or whatever it is that you want to really throw that's when you'll start understanding that it's not all about catching a whole bunch of fish but catching that one big fish and that is the goal that i'm on now is catching the big fish i've caught numbers i've caught some good good fish i'm still searching for that dirty 30. i want that 30 inch trout so bad so i and the one thing i want to do is i want to catch it on a haymaker so we're still on that mission we've caught some good ones we've caught a 27 inch so, but we haven't I haven't gotten that 30 that I want yet so mission is not mission is not accomplished yet but we are still hunting redfish this thing the, they love the haymakers the haymakers the, the redfish just tear it up uh, year round last year I think I caught uh, we got a video of it it was a 30 I think it was a 31 inch it was nine pounds pretty good size red out there wading in chocolate bayou so I mean <clears throat> that's that's another thing to kind of keep in mind these these fish will push more up in the bayous and stuff in the winter time they start looking for that warmer water that deeper water I don't know how well y'all know the bays out here, but a lot of these bays, you know, six foot, six foot is pretty deep in a lot of these bays. So whenever those fish really start looking for those warm spots, now don't get me wrong, they're not going to go all the way across the bay for it. So you will have, if you can find deep boat cuts, deeper boat cuts, deeper areas shelly areas muddy bottom areas those are the types of areas that you're looking for right now i like fishing more of the deeper trying to find those deeper holes doesn't necessarily have to be 20 foot to be a deep hole if you're in a three foot area six foot is a deep hole so it is a deeper hole and, and they will look for that comfort wherever they can that warmth wherever they can that's all fish want to do they want to eat be comfortable and spawn they don't move around a lot they don't move around very far they don't travel very far that's that's another myth i'm not going to call it a myth in my experience they don't travel very far where i catch fish in the summertime i catch fish pretty much in those same areas in the winter time but just in different areas of those same areas. Like there's a, there, there, I'll, when, when it comes winter time, I'll start fishing more on the deep, trying to find the deeper holes, fishing it slower, dragging the bottom, doing a little bit more twitching than, uh, other than a steady retrieve. Things like that really can help you catch more fish in, uh, in, in the winter time other than just you know finding the drain rushing it through the drain dragging it through those fish are not going to be they they in my experience big current uh if it's windy if you have some wind sometimes in the winter time or summertime i like to fish the wind beaten uh wind wind beaded banks because it'll push that bait up against it in the winter time not so much i don't like to be cold they don't either so wherever that wind is hitting that water constantly that water is going to be colder than if it's blocked by the wind so if you can find those 
protected areas in the winter time and try to find those areas that's not really getting hit by a lot of water or a lot of wind if you can find the deep holes in that area if you can find a muddy bottom in that area if you can find a uh, any kind of shell or oyster in that area those are good places to start and target and that is kind of going to be and, and that's kind of what I'm telling you now is kind of uh, my introduction to winter fishing I guess so if this video helps you out at all I know it's uh, I know it's kind of a glitchy one shot I did not I'm not editing this 20 minute long video I probably rambled a lot but please if y'all have any questions uh, I would like to start doing these and I can start doing them more as I shoot baits in the morning I'll just have to do more of a video style like this and I might edit some uh, the next one to try to break it down and dumb it down a little bit 20 minutes is a little bit too long for me I know I like listening to certain stuff that's longer this is more you can you can do this more of an audio deal i'm not doing anything that you have to see so i guess you could kind of call this something like a podcast <laughs> bait making podcast bait making fishing podcast so anyway uh if y'all have any questions about anything coming up i'll start trying to think of little topics that i could talk about uh, uh uh, about winter fishing things like that maybe other things about the lures but uh, if y'all have any questions about anything that's coming up in the winter time what to throw how to how to fish something let me know in the comments or uh, or you can message me on Facebook you can eat you can go to the website and there is a contact form you can send me a contact through uh, through the website uh instagram you can in message me on instagram you can leave a comment on here however just give me the question and i'll try to get it answered for you and i can either do it in the video or if you want i can just do it uh strictly in the messenger or whatever flounder season's closed that kind of sucks because i really look forward to it but definitely still going to go out and do some flounder fishing but we might just have a video or something letting y'all see how these how these lures really work on flounder because they really catch some good flounder i caught a nice 24 inch last year still want to go up higher than that but that's what we got last year this year maybe we can get something a little bigger but uh if you have watched this far through the video thank you very much and uh i hope it helped you out a little bit on things to maybe look for and target starting out this winter and one last thing until that water is under 55 degrees 50 degrees keep fishing it normal I mean like you would in the summertime they're they're not really gonna transition that much my experience they don't it it's it's all a big uh, myth I guess you could say in my eyes I really think you know that those fish fish are not smart they want this they just want to eat be comfortable and spawn so they're not they're not going halfway across the world they're they're going to areas they're going to the same areas and finding the warm areas in those areas so keep fishing hard and if you've made it this far in the video we'll see you at the Galveston fishing show oh we'll see you at the Galveston fishing show December third uh, 10th through the 12th December 10th through the 12th Galveston Fishing Show will be there booth C28 Biden Fight Angler